Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mike from Cornfield Customs again. I've had a couple people message me about what all was involved in upgrading to be able to bend two by three tooling. So I wanna to talk about that in this video, show you how I did it on a budget and what was involved. So stick around as we talk about bending two by three. While it might sound pretty easy to just say, oh, I'm gonna switch from two by four to two by three, it's not like a normal tube bender where you just have a standard female die and a follower die. Mandrel bending dies, especially in rectangle, get very expensive just because there's so many uh, different pieces. And on rectangle, doing two by four and two by three, the machine is so much bigger and the tooling is so much bigger. So if I wanted to just order tooling up, to say go from two by four rectangular to two by three rectangular, the price on those tools are about 20 grand. So that's kind of a gamble for me. Um, I get a lot of interest in two by three, but not quite enough to justify spending that kind of money on the tooling. So I tried to do a budget friendly upgrade and use my two by four tooling to bend two by three. So what I had to do is I had to modify the dies and also I had to order a new mandrel. So the mandrel was one thing I did not make or modify. Um, I called up bend tooling and they made me a mandrel for two by three 120 wall. So I bought that piece, it's set up in the machine and I'll show you that here in a minute. But what I wanted to show you is how I kind of modified my two by four tooling, mainly the pressure die and the clamp die to drop everything down from two by four to two by three. So let me move the camera in and I'll kind of show you how that was done. Hard way bending going from two by four to two by three was relatively easy um, because you're only having to adjust the clamp die and the pressure die over one more inch to compensate from going from four inch to three inch. So luckily the machine is able to be adjusted to do that. But the problem you run into is your wear plates here that are made out of sil uh, aluminum bronze, um, they're an inch too long. So again, I was trying to be budget friendly and I didn't want to buy big pieces of aluminum bronze due to its overall cost. I figured I would do a proof of concept, some testing and kind of test the waters to make sure that there was actually a good market for bending two by three 120 wall. So what I did is I just ordered some cold finish steel flat bar and I machined everything down. I put the same angle here at the end where it goes into the female section of the rectangle die, put our holes in it, and essentially this is just an inch shorter than our aluminum bronze wear plate. I did have to modify our holder a little bit, so I had to come in here and machine an inch out where it comes in and kind of overlaps the die. So that was the only thing I had to modify on our die holder or our clamp die assembly. So that was pretty easy. And then the same thing I had to do on the pressure die was that I just made the pressure die wear plate an inch shorter and then I adjust the machine over. So that was the easy one. The one that was a little bit more tricky was the two by three easy way die. With doing the two by three easy way tooling, it was kind of the same principle as doing the two by four um, that the, it's only two inches wide. So our wear, our wear plates did not need shortened by an inch, but what they needed to do was to be thicker by an inch to compensate for our one inch difference in height. So what I did on these was I didn't want to drill and machine on my aluminum bronze wear plates again, just in case I damaged them, the aluminum bronze is way more expensive to replace than a cold finish steel. So again, I ordered cold finish steel flat bar, put the taper on it, and I machined everything to where it bolted to the main section of our pressure die and our clamp die. But what I had to do to space that out was I also got a piece of one inch thick by two inch um, steel, and then I machined down through the top and countersunk for our bolts, and then I drilled and tapped for uh, our spacer here and that way I could bolt everything together and it's flush across the top and then it can still slide through the tooling. So that was a little bit more involved. There were more pieces with drilling and countersinking and tapping, all of that stuff involved. So it was kind of a long process. I mean, it probably took me about a day worth of 
cutting and deburring and machining and getting everything to where I could get it all put together and do a test. So this was really budget friendly. Um, like I said, I had to buy the mandrel, which was about, I think it was around 1700 bucks. Um, after tax and shipping. And then I have about $1,000 in material and a day's worth of time doing all the machine work. Um, versus 20 to $25,000 on ordering two by three, 120 wall tooling, I'll take, you know, I'll, I'll take the less than $3,000 option just for proof of concept and test the waters. So I'm really glad I did it this way. Eventually, I might remake these pieces out of aluminum bronze uh, just so I don't wear anything out on the machine. And um, the good thing is the steel wasn't all that expensive compared to the aluminum bronze. If I did it all in aluminum bronze, I probably would have had about $3,000 worth of aluminum bronze plate that I would still have to machine. So the steel is about a third of the cost, um, which was really nice. So now I will show you the mandrel and we'll get it set up and we will bend some hard way transmission cross members. So here you're seeing the mandrel, which is the same as a two by four, other than the difference is it's two by three and it's meant for 120 wall tubing. So if you were to take a two by three rectangle, subtract, uh, 120 all the way around it. That is what gives you this dimension. And instead of having three detents uh, that kind of go up past the tangent point of the bend, we only have two, which is fine. That's what the manufacturer recommended. So that's what I went with. So here we have our mandrel. It's set up and here is the cold finished steel wear plate on the pressure die. So that's really all that needed changed was I ordered the mandrel and made the plates and now we can get to bending some two by three. Adjusting everything over to compensate for the difference in material height and width is easy on our clamp die. Um, pretty much you just take this thumb screw loose and you can adjust our magnetic pickup stop. You can see these scribed lines and that is for two by three and two by four easy way bending. Um, and here our line and there is for two by four hard way, just an inch farther out past uh, where I have it set up for the two by three. For the pressure die adjustment, it's pretty simple as well. I have this uh, lead screw here that adjusts the carriage for our pressure die assembly, which all I have to do is adjust it according to the tube uh, width and height we're bending. And uh, you know it's easy to move in and out to get for two by four or two by three hard or easy way. So this one was pretty simple as well as adjusting for the clamp die. So here I have our clamp die that was just over on the table that I was showing you where I modified the wear plate. It's installed. You can see how I had to notch this section here. So as our clamp die comes in, it would clear this section of the female part of the die. So that was why I had to modify that just so it could step over this and clamp everything nice and solid. So that's all of the assembly, how everything works. And now it's time we can uh, bend some tubing. So we're going to turn the machine on, go to single bend, we'll extend our mandrel out, and while that's moving, I'll go ahead and push our tube in. And like in a few other videos, I'm going to use a scrap piece of tubing just so I can help hold the, uh, this tube down into the die without getting my fingers pinched. And with our mark lined up, I will extend our clamp guy. And I'm gonna move the camera and I will show you how that seats up at the bottom here. So here's what I was talking about where I had to machine that corner out so it could come over and overlap this die to sandwich our two by three in there. Now, we can extend our pressure die over. We'll double check that our bend angle is set at 22.4 as per our bend worksheet. And we can bend our first bend. All right, now we can retract everything out. So our mandrel's being pulled out. Now our pressure die is gonna move over and back out of the way. 
Now our clamp die is coming out and I can uh, swing the carriage over, pull that out just a little bit so I can reverse our female section of the die. Then I'll extend the mandrel outward and I'll rotate our tube for the second bend. Once our mark's lined up, we will extend the clamp die into place. Then we will bring over the pressure die. Change our bend angle to 40, 44.3. And we'll do our second bend. I'll retract the mandrel out of the tube. Retract our pressure die. Retract our clamp die. Swing the carriage out of the way. Pull our tube out just a little bit. Reverse the female die. <clears throat> We'll change our bend angle to 22.4, as the bend worksheet says. We'll extend our mandrel. I'll rotate the tube for our final bend. With our bend mark lined up, we'll move our clamp die into place. Then we'll move our pressure die in. and we'll bend. We'll reverse everything back out. Well, there you have it, uh, a two by three 120 wall uh, cross member with a little bit of a drive shaft loop in it. So it's all set up, ready to ship out to the customer. I wanna thank you guys for checking out this video as well as all of my other ones. And hopefully this helped answer some of the questions I've got about how I adapted my two by four tooling to be able to bend two by three rectangular. Um, so again, thank you guys so much. Hopefully you're liking all the new content I'm putting out. Make sure to uh, leave me a comment, uh, give me a rating, tell a friend, anything you can help to spread the word of this channel would be greatly appreciated. And I'm looking forward to getting you a bunch of new, different styled videos in the near future. So thanks again for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next one.